proceed at 7 p.m. on Tuesday, July 5th. Clerk Schultz, would you please call the roll? Chris Barnett? Here. Penny Schultz here. Donnie Steele? Here. Brian Burney? Here. Julia Del Rimple? Here. Mike Flood? Here. Kim Urbanowski? Here. We are present. We have a quorum. Welcome, everyone. Please silence your phones if you have not already. Um, I will try to keep things on a screen of interest. You can see what we're working on and looking at uh, on your phone or your um, computer as well if you're watching from home. All of this information is on our website, the things that are in our packet. Um, we always start our meetings with invocation and pledge, and tonight's invocation is? I'll lead that. All right, Clerk Schultz. And then the pledge, we have a special guest here tonight. Um, Noah, would you lead us in the pledge after the invocation? Sure. All right, thank you. So please stand. Let's pray. Dear Lord, let the daunting size of our task and the sheer weight of our responsibility keep us at the feet of Jesus. Amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Mr. Johnson. All right, um, tonight we have two public hearings. The first is on a Golf View Drive Special Assessment District. Um, I will call that public hearing to order at this time. Um, and I'll turn this over to you, Clerk Schultz. So when you come to the podium, if you would be so kind to state your name and spell your last name, and also include your address so I can keep a record of that, it will be included for the minutes. So the Golf View Drive Private Road Maintenance SAD number two public hearing on proposed roll is scheduled for tonight, July 5th, 2022 at seven o'clock. The purpose of this meeting is to receive public comment on the proposed roll for the special assessment district. Julia Fard in the supervisor's office has compiled all of the parcels along with their addresses, their legal descriptions, and the assessment which will be placed on each of those properties. Okay, so if you're here tonight to give public comment on this special assessment district, please come forward now and as Clerk Schultz mentioned, state your name and address for the record. Anyone? Seeing no one running forward, we will close that public hearing and declare it held at 7.03. We have one more of those tonight, and that is for um, the BBJ Private Road Maintenance SAD number one. This public hearing is scheduled for tonight, Tuesday, July 5th at 7 o'clock. The purpose of the meeting is to receive public comment only on the cost estimate and work plan for the special assessment district. We did receive a copy of that work plan and the cost estimates, and we have also been in contact with the owners of parcel one and 33, requesting that they be removed from the district. Both of those parcels have driveways that are on North Long Lake Boulevard and have stated they receive no benefit from the maintenance of the roads in the district. They won't even benefit from chloriding of Beardsley is proposed to be asphalted. Their emails were attached, the board has that information. You also have the cost estimate and work plan that is from 2023 to 2027. And we have everything that we need tonight to be able to hear the public comment from all of you who are here to represent that special assessment district. And the district, the BBJ, um, it stands for, I gotta find it, it's Beardsley, uh, Johnson, and what's the other B? Anybody know? Butler, Butler, Thank Butler you. and Johnson Roads. There you go. All right. Is anyone here to address us on this special assessment district? Yes. Come, please come forward. And um, if, if there's more of you, if you want to just maybe create a little line. My name is Jason Smith. I live at 717 Johnson Drive. Uh, I have lived there for a little over 25 years. And in the past 20 or so, I have donated, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, plenty of time and money to the maintenance of all three of these roads, uh, mostly my road, Johnson, and uh, going out to Cronkite. Uh, I used to uh, go around to the neighbors and ask for money just and would hire somebody for grading. I have borrowed equipment 
uh, to do grading myself. Um, I, this is something I've wanted to see come to fruition for many years uh, so that even though it's probably more than everybody thought it would be, that everybody would be pay paying their fair share uh, for the maintenance of the roads because everybody drives on the roads. Um, the only questions I have, and I, the hours that I work, I'm not able to get here during your time frame that you're open to see the, you know, the work that's going to be completed because that, that first year is uh, you know, a pretty good chunk. So uh, I didn't know if we were going to talk about that. This, oh, thank you. You can keep that. Okay, thank you much. You're welcome. Uh, anyways, I just wanted to say that I was pretty much all in favor. I would just like to have some clarification as to what uh, what we were paying for. That's all. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, John Navarro, N-A-V-A-R-R-O. Um, I live on Long Lake, so I'm one of the two people that's here tonight that are on Long Lake that don't believe we should be on this, so I just wanted to put that on record. The other couple's here as well. Your address again? 603 North Long Lake. Thanks. Good evening. My name is Sandy Burgess, and I own the two empty lots, 731 and 745 Johnson Drive. And I'm glad to see this. I wish we had had this information. But I wanted to know how we determined to use, I guess, allied construction. Did we bid the jobs out, or did we just a construction construction company and say it's yours <clears throat> I worked for Oakland County and they had to bid everything out and go with the Lotus bid and I didn't know if, if Lake Orion did that or not um, will this be provided to the residents also this is very good information here yes Thank this, you. yep and we'll take all the comments and then I can try to answer a couple questions um, any other comments on this special assessment district Okay, um, we did, Penny, do you want to read, um, or do you want me to? I just gave mine away. Okay. <laughs> uh, we received um, written correspondence uh, from a Pam Molick, who initiated the petition drive, and she is in favor. Deborah Nash, who is also in favor, 655 Butler. Uh, William Caddick of 631 Johnson um, is opposed, and Carl and Donna Malin Malinat um, are, are also opposed. Um, and just, just to um, speak just briefly on how this works, if you haven't been here for one of these before, uh, they, these projects are initiated by the residents. They're not initiated by the township, and so we... Basically, the only thing we do is we collect the money and we make sure the contractors get paid. So the residents that set this up, um, it sounds like Pam is the person. She would be the one that would be able to speak to uh, the process. Um, but we have, I don't know, a couple dozen of these around town. And do you know much more on this, Sam? Do you want to add anything else? Okay. Um, and they are all initiated by the residents. Um, the only thing the township does is we collect the money and make sure the projects uh, that they get paid. All right, seeing no one else for that, we will declare that and we will plan on taking action on both these items in pending business in just a few minutes. Um, so we will declare that public hearing held at 7.09. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the, um, if you pull this, uh, if you, you can, I'm just pulling this information off of our board book, which is on our website right now. Um, but we can uh, we can direct you to that information if you're curious and you want to see all the backup material. I apologize. Um, I did not know what was shared with you and what, what has not been shared. Uh, like I said, the role of the township in this is to, take, to kind of take the temperature of the residents and see if there's uh, support. Typically, we look for at least 50%. Um, and then if there is, then, then we allow the process to move forward. So all this backup information is in our board packet. You can also come to my office um, anytime this week, and you can uh, ask for Julie Savard, and she can assist. She prepares these for us. All right, moving on in the agenda, we will take action on both those items shortly, like I said. 
Um, every month we take a few minutes at one meeting to recognize some of our brightest and best citizens. And tonight is no exception. And he is not here with us tonight, but we wanted to just take a minute to recognize our July Citizen of the Month. Let me just see if I can pull this up. And many of you probably know him. Um, but our July Citizen of the Month is Mr. Steve Hawley. Steve Hawley has been our principal at Lake Orion High School since 2012. He's been in education over 30 years. Um, but I would tell you that um, I had the privilege of being on the committee when we hired him uh, 10 years ago, and he will be sorely missed. He is an asset to our community and um, led us through some really trying times, and we want to say thank you to Steve. Um, if you saw the news, he's stepping down to take care of his health. Um, so we want to send him our prayers and thoughts, and we want to just take a minute to put him on our wall of fame for the next year here at the township. So thank you to Steve Hawley. If you know him, uh, send him a nice note of uh, congratulations. It would probably make him proud. Uh, next item tonight, we have something also very cool. Um, our Pledge of Allegiance leader, Eagle Scout, um, Mr. Noah Johnson is here tonight. And Noah is here uh, because he has completed um, his Eagle Scout project, which is pretty awesome. It's a B hotel. Um, and I would love for you to come forward if you're comfortable and talk to us a little bit about your project because you know it certainly way better than I do from reading this note up here. And I've had the privilege of knowing Noah for many years now. Uh, and it's awesome to see, see where you've come. So Mr. Johnson, do you want to come up and say a few words or talk about your project? Um, yeah, so basically, um, B hotels are created to provide shelter for um, some endangered species of bees. Um, they're specifically made for solitary bees, which are bees that um, live on their own, like not in a hive. Um, they don't produce honey or anything like that. Um, so they just um, like live, like I said, on their own. So um, in that picture, you can see there's a lot of small holes. Um, those are used for the bees to go into, um, which they lay their larva and then leave, and then the larva like develop, hatch, or just grow up, basically, and um, leave about a year later. Um, and so that's really what the project is for. Uh, it took me a good few months to put together, um, gather volunteers, construct it, and install it right outside the Orion Library. There's one right in the Reading Garden and then another one on the Paint Creek Trail um, leading up to the back of the library. Very cool. Well, we want to say congratulations. What a journey. And uh, on behalf of the Township Board, we're grateful for your service. And uh, has anybody seen these in yep. person? <laughs> Pretty cool. Yep. Um, I never heard of a bee hotel before tonight. <laughs> Learned something new today. All right, well, thank you, Mr. Johnson. We want to congratulate you. Okay, next item is not as exciting, I promise. Unfortunately, we have to pay our bills. Um, Ms. Steele, yes. Good evening, everyone. I just want to make a motion to pay the bills in the total amount of $1,215,858.85. And 85 cents, which includes the payroll as well. Support. And I just have a couple quick comments. Um, we had Allied Construction Bill, which is 238,000, and that did the par portion of the paving on scripts. Um, we did receive our delinquent taxes from um, Oakland County, and that was a pass through for 140,000. Uh, LJ Construction fixed the boardwalk on. Uh, Clarkston Road near M24, which was in need of repair for the safety path. And then we paid our Oakland County assessing bill of 267000 And then we did a um, Indian Wood, which is also a sad Indian Wood Lake, and they did weed control for 14000 And those were just a couple of the highlights. Thank you. Yes. 
Ms. Schultz. Um, so the bills are produced in the clerk's office, and Melissa Bardecki um, does a lot of work to compile this for the public and for the board. And a couple of things that are interesting to note on this board run is that there are void um, check numbers that you're seeing on this register, and that would be because we reached out to probably 40 people who hadn't cashed their checks, and those checks went stale. And in order for us to be able to um, clear the books, if you will, we have to check with them to see if they would like a new check and many of them did so we voided those and now those ones that didn't they're called s cheats and we turn them over to the state of michigan for processing so there's quite a process involved in doing this we just do our due diligence to make sure people who should be paid do get paid and melissa bardecki is still here working at 716 she does an amazing job and i just want to give her a shout out tonight okay thank you um are there any other comments or questions on the board bills Seeing none, Clerk Schultz, please call the roll. Dalrymple? Yes. Flood? Yes. Urbanowski? Yes. Barnett? Yes. Schultz? Yes. Steele? Yes. Ernie? Yes. The bills are paid. All right, takes us to public comment. This is the first chance um, of the night to come talk to us about uh, anything that's not on tonight's agenda. So if you hear about something on the agenda, we ask for you to wait. We'll give you a chance when we get there. Um, but this is for non-agenda items. Does anyone want to address the board at this time? Yep, come on forward. Hello, my name's Philip Bone. I'm a 1497 Heights Road, last name B-O-N-E, just like it sounds. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm a president of the uh, Disappearing Lake Association, which is our association for the Square Lake. Uh, there's five subdivisions around it. And uh, there's two ordinances I want to talk about tonight real quickly. Uh, one's ordinance number 17 for a portion of our lake called Little Square where it's been declared as a no wake lake. Okay, no wake portion of the lake. Um, the other uh, is ordinance number 140, and the purpose of that letter, uh, uh, ordinance was to regulate speed and provide safe use of the waters in uh, Lake Orion. Okay, so we had a member on the lake moved in uh, recently, just in the last few weeks. I think we've had a couple of new people. Uh, and uh, they wanted to know if they could buy a jet ski to go on the lake, but it was an electric motor jet ski, okay, which kind of meets the qualification of only electric motors on the, any vessels on the lake. Uh, but unfortunately, when this was made, jet skis didn't go really fast with electric motors, and, and a lot of the boats that we have in our lake right now are electric motors. They only go five miles an hour at the max. Um, the boats are going to start going a lot faster, too, you know. So... I'd like to amend um, either ordinance number 140 to say no wake lake, as it does in the other portion of the lake, or uh, expand ordinance number 17 to be inclusive of the whole lake being no wake. Uh, and that way, uh, we can not have to worry about whether it's electric motor or gas motor. Um, the speed of the boat or vessel will be regulated. We've got sandbars in the middle of the lake. They're fun to play on, volleyball and that kind of thing. But very dangerous if you're going at a fast speed if you hit it with something. So we just like to have one of those two ordinances uh, modified to ensure that we have good safe speed on the lake. Okay. Sir, would you send an email to me with your request and I'll put it out to the board. Great. Thank you very I'm much. Glad you're here tonight. Should I leave my phone number or anything like that? Um, nope. Send if you, you want to grab a card uh, that's out there and you can just send me an email. Great. Thank you. Thank ben. you. Thank you. And there are other lakes as well that have asked me to look into that recently as well. So, um, yes, electric motors are a new thing. Um, and so we'll look at that. Thank you for bringing that to our attention. Any other public comment, general public comment at this time? Seeing none, we'll move on to approval of tonight's agenda. Are there any proposed changes? Mr. Supervisor? Yep. Uh, move down uh, consent F, down pending F. Okay. That's one change I have. Anyone, any other, anything else? Or a motion to approve? Mr. Supervisor, I'll move to approve the agenda as amended. Support. Okay. Moved by flood, supported by Bernie. All in favor, aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Okay, that takes us to tonight's consent agenda. All of these items will be voted on with one vote. Uh, and if you're here to discuss any of these items, you could come to the podium now. But tonight's consent agenda consists of approving three sets of minutes 
uh, approving a resolution for ch a charitable gaming license, uh, an Al ordinance 76 application procedure for our um, ordinance 76 process here in the office. A resolution, I'm sorry, that's new, that's been moved down. Uh, we're hiring a full-time firefighter, appointing an environmental resources committee member, scheduling a public hearing for the Lake Orion Water Control, Quality Control SAD number two, and approving a tuition reimbursement. Is there a motion to approve tonight's consent agenda? Mr. Supervisor, yes. I move to approve the consent agenda as amended. Thank you. Is there support? Support. support. Okay, moved and supported. Any comments or questions from the board on any of these items? Mr. Supervisor? Yes. I want to comment on the Environmental Resource Committee, and I'm glad Mr. Johnson, our Eagle Scout's here, because uh, we're finally going to uh, take care of that absent student member. We've always tried to get a high school student involved in our Resource Committee, and the bees is number one uh, thing on the agenda for pollination. So I want to welcome uh, Avery Case, who will be a senior this year at the Lake Orion High School. That's it. Okay, any other comments or questions from board members? Any public comment on any of these items that will be voted on at one time? I want to say, um, say potentially welcome <laughs> to Mr. Ryan Kimbrough. Um, Ryan is here, I think, tonight. Hello, Ryan. Um, and with this vote, he will be joining our fire, fire team. And I see he's got some colleagues here as well supporting him. So uh, let's, let's call the roll and then maybe we can uh, have him introduce himself. Clerk Schultz. Urbanowski. Yes. Barnett. Yes. Schultz. Yes. Steele. Yes. Bernie. Yes. Del Rimpo and yes. Flood. Yes. Sorry. Flood. A little fast. <laughs> Julie was excited. Um, all right. The, that motion passes. And welcome to the team, Mr. Kimbrough. Do you want to come up and at least introduce yourself now that you've got the job? <laughs> <laughs> Well, you already said my name, Ryan Kimbrough, and uh, I'm just very excited to uh, get working with Lake Orion and serve this township best I can. We're excited to have you. Where are you coming to us from? Oxford. That's, that's even better. <laughs> I actually uh, played against you in the kickball game a couple months ago. So. How'd that work out for you? You, you beat us pretty good. <laughs> Figured he, I had to switch sides. He knew he knew he was applying for the job, and he let it, you let us win. That was very that was gentlemanly of you. Yes, sir. Uh, welcome to the team, and welcome to our family. We're grateful that uh, you chose us, and uh, thank you for being willing to serve our residents. Thank you, sir. Yeah, welcome. Cool. Yes. That's great news. We are getting close, right, Assistant Chief Pender, to being fully staffed. Very close. Mm -hmm. If you know anyone, we might have one or two more spots. Uh, we've seen a great evolution of our fire department over the last four or five years here, and we appreciate all of our residents' support. Um, that moves us to pending business tonight. We have items A through E, F now, I'm sorry. Uh, the first is that Golf You Drive Private Road Maintenance SAD um, that we had the public hearing for earlier. Uh, I'll turn this back to you, Clerk Schultz. So the public hearing on the proposed special assessment role was held tonight, Tuesday, July 5th, 2022. After the hearing is held, the action before the board is to decide whether or not to confirm the role as presented, confirm it with modifications, and you can do, could delete a parcel, but not add a parcel, or reject it. If you have any questions, you can contact administrative assistant to the supervisor, Julianne Savard. She has all the records on file. The board has all the information regarding this um, special assessment district. We also have a resolution entitled Golffield Drive Public, or excuse me, Golffield Drive Private Road Maintenance Agreement. SAD number two. Therefore, I move to adopt the attached resolution confirming the assessment role for the Golf View Drive Private Road Maintenance SAD number two. Support. All right. It's been moved and supported. Are there any comments or questions? We did not have much on this one. Um, any comments or questions from the board? I just want to make a quick comment about the SAD. It's just... If Anybody, if you don't know, it's added to your tax bill, and then we collect it when you pay in your taxes, and it goes into a separate fund that is utilized only for the work that is done on that road. So, and it's the, ta the SAD is 
um, charged on your winter tax bill, not your summer tax bill. Thanks. Okay. Um, are there any additional comments that there are questions at this time from members of the public on this special assessment district? Seeing none, Clerk Schultz, would you please call the roll? Barnett? Yes. Schultz, yes. Steele? Yes. Ernie? Yes. Del Rimpo? Yes. Flood? Yes. Irvinowski? Yes. Okay, that brings us to the Beardsley, Butler, and Johnson, SAD. Uh, Clerk Schultz, I'll let you take this one for now. So the BBJ Private Road Maintenance SAD number one, this is the action after the hearing. So we held the hearing tonight, July 5th, 2022, and the board has the following options on this special assessment district. Adopt the attached resolution authorizing preparation of the special assessment role as presented, or adopt the attached resolution authorizing preparation of the special assessment role as modified by moving, adding properties, or drop the project for any reason the board chooses. Two removal requests have been received for the parcels labeled 1 and 33 on the map. Two forms of the resolution are attached. The original resolution with all parcels including labeled A and a revised resolution with parcels 1 and 33 removed labeled B. Um, also, if you have any questions, contact Julie Savard. She's at extension 1000. And therefore, well, the board has everything that they need to make an informed decision. We will be adopting the um, resolution labeled B, removing parcels 1 and 33. Um, approve removing the parcels is the motion. Repo approve removing the parcels labeled 1, parcel ID number 0901-135-016-589 North Long Lake, and 33, parcel ID number 0901-176048, and that would be 603 North Long Lake Boulevard, from the district with the understanding that they will be put back into the district if Beardsley is not asphalted and receives chloride treatments. And adopt the attached resolution labeled B, authorizing the preparation of the special assessment role for the BBJ Private Road Maintenance Agreement, SAD number one. That's my motion. I'll support the motion. Okay. Um, are there dis is there are there questions or discussion uh, first amongst the board? Just one comment. Yeah. Um, Julie Savard does an amazing job. Um, she's been doing the special dis assessment districts for the township for a long time. If you need any information, get a hold of her. She'll provide you with the maps and the rationale behind the distribution of the assessments. Mr. Yeah, I'm glad to say to them. Uh, Make an adjustment on, on those parcels right there. That's fair. Very good job. Um, and yeah, if there, if there are additional questions that you don't feel get answered tonight, I would just encourage to call Julie Savard as, as um, Clerk Schultz just referenced. Um, she's at the main line, extension 1000. That's how you can reach her and she will be able to answer all these questions uh, that we might not, not know about. Um, and probably share information with, contact information with the person that started this process, um, who's one of your neighbors. <clears throat> All right, are there any other public comments at this time on this special assessment district? Okay. Um, Clerk Schultz, would you please call the roll? Schultz, yes. Steele? Yes. Bernie? Yes. Dorimpo? Yes. Flood? Yes. Urbanowski? Yes. Barnett? Yes. Okay. That motion passes. Uh, next item is a second reading of our township initiated tax men amendment to ordinance number 78, industrial complex. Um, and this is the uh, General Motors site, is, a, is the only parcel that is zoned industrial complex in the township. Uh, Clerk Schultz, do you want to take this or do you want me to? Sure. The Planning Commission at their June 15th, 2022 meeting passed a motion to forward to the Board of Trustees a recommendation to approve PPC 2022-22 text amendment to Zoning Ordinance Number 78, Article 19, Industrial Complex, IC. The process has been that the Board of Trustees held the first reading for this um, PPC 2022-22 20, on June 20th, 2022, and advertised for the second reading and possible approval adoption at this meeting tonight, July 5th. So the board has all the information they need. Um, thank you, attorneys, for preparing this. Thank you, Tammy Gerling, for providing all the information that was needed. We have um, the new articles 
for this industrial amend or this amendment to zoning ordinance number 78, article 19. Therefore, I move to declare that the second reading of PPC-2022-22, text amendment to zoning ordinance number 78, article 19, industrial complex IC to have been held on July 5th, 2022, and to approve, adopt the text amendment as advertised. Support. Okay. Been moved and supported. And I believe someone is here today that's working with GM on this, but I don't know if, if there are questions we can ask them. Um, are there, is there anything else we need to know on this, Tammy? Okay. Um, appreciate the Planning Commission's work on this, and I second that. I know we have a meeting every Tuesday with GM and team to hopefully usher this project in as smooth as, pro as possible. So we're excited about the investment of General Motors into our community. Any uh, board comments beyond that? Seeing none, any public comment on this text amendment? No one's rushing forward, so let's uh, go back to calling the roll, please. Steele? Yes. Bernie? Yes. Dalrymple? Yes. Flood? Yes. Urbanowski? Yes. Barnett? Yes. Schultz? Yes. That motion passes. Thank you. Um, now get to work. <laughs> All right, next item on tonight's agenda is, give me a second, please. Um, 173. An application for operation of recreational vehicles. Um, you want to just roll with it? All right, we're rolling. Um, so this one was before the board, uh, I believe it was two meetings ago, but there was some questions regarding the signature and if the applicant had the ability to sign the application. They have remedied that. They brought in the information that we needed to bring it back to the Township Board of Trustees for review. So the request is to review and consider an application for operation of recreational vehicles on private property. Ordinance number 62 regulates the operation of recreational vehicles in the township and establishes a process for the issuance of permits for certain uses. The township has an application for operation of recreational vehicles on private property available for property owners to submit to request authorization to operate recreational vehicles on their private property. The process has been an application was received by the clerk's office on May 18th, 2022 for operation of recreational vehicles on vacant property on Baldwin Road, parcels 09, 07, 226, 002, 09, 07, 226, 009, and 0908, 100, 002, owned by the Dragon Foundation, LLC. This item was first considered by the board on June 6th, at which time action was postponed until additional information was submitted by the applicant. The applicant did provide the necessary paperwork listing him as the signer on behalf of the Dragon Foundation and asked that the board review their application. So so we have a complete application from this association and they're asking in the application, I believe there are 13 names they're asking to be permitted under this parcel, these parcels that were mentioned. And um, Todd Garris was the signer for the Dragon Foundation. But they have his um, a legal description for all of the properties involved. And then we did receive um, comments from residents in that area. And Chris, at what time do you want those read? Um. Maybe we'll do public comment and then we'll, because mm -hmm. some of those people potentially might be here. Sure. Um, so, okay. So we have this application. Typically we would have a motion before we'd open up for board or public discussion. Is there a proposed motion at this time? Mr. Supervisor? Yeah. I will move to deny the application. Okay. Is there support? Support. Okay, moved and supported. First board comments, questions. Um, are there any discussion? Okay, let's open up to public comment. Anyone here want to address this issue? Hi, good evening. My name is Dan Ulett. My name is spelled O-U-E-L-L-E-T-T-E. -E -T -T -E. I live at 3660 Park Meadow Drive here in Lake Orion. Uh, this property in question is a property adjacent to the property where I live. For several years, there has been numerous uh, dirt bikes on this vacant property. 
At times, for hours and hours, on m many days during the week, there's a line of pickup trucks, dirt bikes, who are using this property, and it's created a great problem with noise and disturbances in our community. And I would strongly support denying this permit. The, um, the permit itself seems to me that it would be ineffective, and it would be ineffective because it wouldn't solve the dispute between ourselves and these other property owners. The noise uh, complaints will continue even if the permit was approved. There are also certain tenants of, the ordin of this permit which seem to be unenforceable to me. There's a list of people, but I can't see that it would be in any fashion easy to monitor which people are actually using this property in this fashion, uh, or to, um, in fact, determine if they have the proper um, licenses or certificates, unless we had some sort of continuing uh, monitoring of the situation, which I don't think is very likely. Furthermore, I think that our community has a number of ordinances and rules which implicate this specific situation. And passing this permit would, in fact, be contrary to those ordinances. We have noise ordinances in this community that are being violated, and I ask that these noise ordinances be enforced. There are zoning ordinances. This is zoned as a residential area, not as a recreational use area. And we should, we should uh, this, passing this permit would be contrary to that. I have in front of me, from the Charter Township of Orion, Zoning Ordinance 78, Article 24, an element that seems to be directly applicable. This states that these uses are not permitted. Any use that would be incompatible with adjacent land uses or the township master plan because the use generates excessive traffic or noise, alters or destroys the natural terrain, and parenthetically, if you look at a topographical map of this area, much of it is wetlands, and I don't know to what extent that's been disturbed creates noxious fumes or other air pollutants or disturbs the peach, peace, such as motorcycle or auto racing clubs. And this ordinance would seem to be directly applicable to this permit. So I ask the board not to approve this permit to observe and enforce our ordinances that are already in existence. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Roulette. Good evening. My name is Delia DeVito. First name spelled D-E-L-I-A. Last name D as in dog, I, capital V as in Victor, I-T-O. My address is 3624 Park Meadow Drive in Orion Township. Uh, in May of 2021, 42 of my neighbors signed on to a letter objecting to the use of this property for motorcycle riding. For all of the reasons uh, that Mr. Ouellette enumerated, the noise, the dust, the disturbance, wild parties at night, which drew four Oakland County sheriffs. Okay. My husband and I served a copy of this letter to each of you at your offices. I'm not aware that any of you have responded, so I'm going to renew this uh, objection. Okay, and if you'd like a copy of this for the record, for the minutes, you're welcome to take it. Thank you. Okay. Um, I'm going to uh, not reiterate all of the ordinance violations that Mr. Ouellette enumerated, but I agree with them all. In addition, I actually think that approval of this permit would violate Ordinance 62 itself. Section 5C says that no person shall operate any type of snowmobile, four-wheel drive, et cetera, et cetera, in a manner which would cause loud, unnecessary, or unusual noise, which would interfere with the peace and quiet of other persons. Lastly, the application itself, I think, is deficient. There is no entity called the Dragon Foundation LLC. It is the Dragon Foundation Inc., different corporate entity. It's clearly attached to the application itself, the uh, articles, not the articles of incorporation, excuse me, the annual report for this organization, which is filed with the Michigan Corporations Bureau. And you'll see that it's called the Dragon Foundation, Inc. So for that alone, I, I don't think you could approve it today. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Anyone else? 
Good evening. My name is Bill Backus. I live at oh, B-A-C-K-O-S. I live at 3624 Park Meadow. And Chris, I think you'll agree that you have received several emails in regards to the, the noise, the dirt from this, I'll call it the Baldwin Road um, dirt track. I have, for the committee, copies of some of these emails. This is only a sample of the emails. This is only one copy. So I ask that each of you board members take a look at these emails before you make your decision. And Chris, this will be a reminder to you too. We've been fighting this for two years. Finally, I'm glad it's coming to a head. Can I present this to the board? Yes, I would love it. And may I have that copy, ma'am, as well? I appreciate that, thank you. Do you need these returned? <laughs> Thank you. All right, come on. Next person, please. Thank you so much. There we go. Hello, uh, Greg Miller. Uh, I live at 3636 Park Meadow. I uh, wanted to add my uh, request that this permit be denied. Uh, obviously, all the reasons that were already stated here by the, by the group. I, I wanted to add to that. Um, I have small kids that get out in our backyard and it is extremely loud to the point where my kids often don't want to go outside while they're out riding dirt bikes. I've got a six year old and a four year old. Um, you know, obviously Lake Orion, right? You need to be outside. You want your kids to be out and be able to play and it, it's distracting. It's, it's extremely noisy. Uh, I have also witnessed them coming out of that area on dirt bikes and riding them down the sidewalk on Baldwin Road, which is extremely not safe for again, my kids out biking, walking, biking. Um, you're in this area, it's about 100 homes probably that are affected by this. You're talking 400 people, roughly, that are going to be affected by this so that 14 people can ride dirt bikes. Um, also would add, kind of going through your master plan that I saw is on the website, looking at kind of that five-year um, plan in the 15-minute neighborhoods, which I think is a great idea. If you're looking to have that be a walkable area where people can again, maybe ride down to Baldwin Commons or you know up to the... Indianwood Junction and things like that, get a thing of milk, whatever, as is stated in that plan. I, having dirt bikes there and potentially, again, coming out of this area is, is going to be a safety hazard and I think runs counter to what you're trying to do with that plan, which is to make nice, walkable, safe communities. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, good evening. Um, I have a big fear of public speaking, but this um, was a matter that was important to me. Uh, Megan Fossman, uh, my husband and I live at 3338 Park Meadow Drive. We're more towards the back of that subdivision. Um, when we moved to Lake Orion about 10 years ago, we chose that Hills of Indian at Indianwood uh, specific subdivision and built our home there for the park-like setting. Um, very quiet, peaceful, um, nature-like setting. Um, and in the last two years, we have small children as well, turn into what they've said as well. They love to play outside and they can't even, I mean, we are, we're outside and it's constant noise all hours of the day, all hours of the night, dirt bikes nonstop, loud music. Um, my husband and I work from home since COVID and um, pre before this permit application was submitted, they were doing it for a little while um, and we're on the phone, so it's very distracting to have that noise happening when you're trying to conduct business from your house because it literally comes through your walls with the windows shut. It echoes. Um, so it's just very disturbing. Um, and I really hope that you've listened to the ordinance issues. I'm not privy on all of that, but I just know it's bothersome. Um, and I know a lot of our neighbors couldn't be here, but they've sent you letters as well to, to voice <coughs> their concern as well. So I hope you also deny this permit. Thank you, Ms. Fossman. You did a great job, by the way. Mm -hmm. yeah. Hi, I'm Nicole Holick, O-C-H-O-L-I-K. I'm at 3648 Park Meadow Drive. Um, I'm also close to the property, and um, I'm not an ORV hater. I'm an owner of ORV, snowmobile, so on, but I feel there's an appropriate area for these. We take our, play, our sleds, our ORVs, our side-by-sides, up north of the trails, these trails are maintained. There's Holly ORV Park right up the road, 30 minutes, Bundy Hill within an hour and a half. So there are appropriate areas for these vehicles. 
I feel this ordinance is 40 years old, and 40 years ago, Orion Township was a very different area. Now, this is not quite applicable. The intent of this original ordinance is not what it is today. And so um, I feel like the abrupt racing, the dirt, all the issues that have been raised, um, I can also hear it through my windows. I work at home. And I would almost compare this to like a mosquito in your ear at night, and it's that constant bzzz all day, and then one day it stopped. And it was like, this was pre-dirt bike, and it was like the best. And so to see that the permits here and that could possibly be approved, um, it, it really is upsetting, I believe, to a lot of people who are here tonight and also who have submitted their letters. Um, I know that we've had petitions signed and everything, um, and I can't think of what else I wanted to say, but that's it. So thank you. Thank you. Thanks for your comments. Um, I don't see anyone else coming up, so I'll re there's a few letters here. I, I, I can just run through them real quick, or do you want to? I'm, I'm going to do it, because I think I have a full account of them. Okay, go ahead. Um, thank you for the information that you presented, everyone. I'm just going to briefly um, go through the letters and who sent them, just so you have an idea of who the neighbors are that are also supporting this denial. Um, this was submitted by at the last um, time that we did discuss this and postpone action on it. And they are just stating the same reasons. They're directly affected by the loud, continuous noise. It's unbearable. Um, they don't wish to take away any enjoyment from people riding their bikes, but the constant assault of noise is disturbing. And that was presented to the board anonymously, but they do live in that area, they stated. This is also from Brianna Gagnon. Um, she's a resident of the Hills at Indian Woods subdivision on Baldwin. Um, she's writing to demonstrate her uh, stance against the request to permit the use of recreational vehicles on the property at Baldwin. The noise and dust produced by riding these recreational vehicle infringes on the personal rights of the neighbors, the peace and quiet that they look forward to. And these are um, completely on file in the clerk's office if you want to read them in their entirety. Then David Gerrera, um, he also said he would keep it short. The ideal of the motocross continuing on the vacant land goes against everything we stand for as a community. Um, you're helping to build our parks and the fields and the safety trails for our community to enjoy. But based on the master plan, he feels that this will um, not accomplish what you're seeking to do. Then we received from Todd Hiller. Uh, he had some thoughts on the motorcycle permits, and basically he stated the same thing. The parties involved listed on the application mean this is only isn't really a couple of owners tooling around on their property. It's a group, a club, that will grow exponentially when they start inviting friends. Approval of the permit could open the door to more of these type of enterprises, making it more of a norm. Um, he's in the back of the sub, but he already hears another track in the woods behind him where the owners ride four-wheelers and motorcycles within 20 feet of that property line. Quite irritating when you're enjoying the short outdoor season. Then another letter was received um, from Brad Remmer, and he says, you know, the um, approval is on this, or the uh, applicant is on the agenda tonight. He lives in the sub, and he adjoins the area where the bikes have been used for a couple years. To say it's been annoying would be an understatement. The noise, especially when the wind blows, um, is unbelievable, and it goes on all day. They don't even sit on their deck. It's a bad experience. So Carrie Christoffensen. She basically says the same thing. She says, um, you know, look at the hours. If, if you even think about entertaining approval, we really need to know that it's only for a certain period of time, certain days. Um, they ask specifically for two-wheeled motorcycles. From what the research shows, most motorcycles will provide a decimal level of at least 75 and above. So she stated some t statistics in there as well. And then there's another one from Brianna Gagnon. Did I read that one already? Yeah, I think we did. That one's a duplicate. Thank you. Um, and then, Chris, if you don't have any more, I don't. Well, that's the, you think you covered the ones that I had as well, so well done on that. Um, okay, so the motion was made to deny, so a yes vote on this will be <coughs> to deny, not to approve. Mm -hmm. Sometimes confusing, I want to state that. Um, any other comments from the board? I have a couple, but go ahead, Julia. Um, I know that at our last meeting, we um, were hopeful that, that the groups could reach out and communicate. Do we know, did that happen at all on the hours of operation that maybe there could be like a middle ground in there? Does, did that happen? When um, the applicant came in to present his um, signature and then his corporation letters, he did state that they had heard that there were going to be some discussion regarding that, and he would comply. Okay. Thank you. Mm-hmm. 
Being a motion maker, lived here all my life, 73 years. When I purchased my property, the kids that lived next door to it had a, had a motocross on the property. It was vacant. Once I purchased my property, they didn't run their motorcycles on there anymore. Things have changed in this township. I agree with every resident what was said. You guys did an excellent presentation there. I also agree there's a, a need for this for, for kids in this community. It's not the right location. It's not the right property zoned. Uh, the way ordinance is written up, they have every right to come before us tonight uh, because of how the ordinance is set up. I think there's plenty of other industrial park spots around here. I know they've opened up, like you said, an OR, ORV uh, place up like Groveland, I think, somewhere up in there. they got a track now and everything. I would not want it beside my house. That's why I'm voting to deny. Would I like that next to my neighborhood? No. That's why I'm in favor of denying the applicant. That's it. Tim? Yeah, I think, um, Mr. Ouellette, you had a question about the number of applicants listed, and I also had a question about that last time. Um, at least a concern about how would we be able to make sure that it's just <clears throat> those people. And, and, you know, trying to, and I think we even talked about some sort of, you know, uh, note for each one of them. But I do agree that there are too many people and it will probably end up being more than is listed on here. Um, I do have a concern. It is zoned residential um, and is right very close to a residential neighborhood. So for me, and then I wasn't aware about the safety hazard on the, on the safety paths or the sidewalks. Um, that is a concern, obviously. Um, don't call them safety paths if we've got vehicles on them. Um, and then I, I, I heard what you said about the intent of the ordinance um, not being in alignment with, you know, the way that the township is currently. So maybe that's something that we need to look at. But that's why I seconded the motion. Brian? And, um, I, and this is a question for anybody because I, I just honestly don't know. The, the hours of operation, have those been adhered to or before this application or is this brand new so they they're saying monday through saturday 10 to 6 p.m so nothing on sunday nothing past six we need him on the mic okay. yeah. uh, it's, it's okay mic. it's okay i can we're not going to go back and forth can yeah you repeat that yeah. what he said so so he said that there's been no adherence to, to hours um I can tell you that over the years, we've tried to work to some resolution on this, and there was some agreement on ours. Now we understand that it sounds like it has not always been adhered to. All right, um, all right, that's fair. So this is where I struggle with this. Um, I, uh, I live in this area as well. I'm not as impacted as all of you. Um, I can certainly hear the, the noise as well. My house is right off of Baldwin. Uh, very close to this um, but where my hang up is is we're dictating to somebody what they can do on their private property um, and from there where does that end what what are we we opening up here can is can the same complaints be made for the lake can the same complaints be made for miracle field anywhere any business can can we do that um, so that's where I struggle with this. I, I, I know it's annoying, and I know it's, you know, there's lots of annoying things. I'm annoyed by my neighbor across the road because he mows his lawn every day. That's annoying, you know, but it's not up to me. It's his private property. So I'm not going to vote to deny this, um, and that's the reasons why. I, but I, I feel for all the residents, I, I'm one of them. I just, I feel that if there's more communication with this foundation, um, then maybe there can be a happy resolution or happier. So that's my take. Honey? I concur with Brian. I feel that, um, like, I had a house on the lake for a while and there was a jet skier that decided to stay in the bay his entire life. And all day long, it was that same noise and there was nothing that I could do. And, and the same token, I appreciate the kids getting out there and doing, being outside and playing and using the property to um, what, they, what, they, what they want to do with it. And I also understand that 
you too have a right to your peaceful privacy in your yard. Um, so it's it, their their fun shouldn't be your um, um, dismay. So I struggle with this one as well too. So. Okay, I'll just give you a couple of thoughts from me. Um, we've been, we have been working on this, and uh, I did not grow up in this community. I moved here when I had children, so 26 years ago. I don't think I'll ever leave. I love it. Uh, but, you know, because of this job, you get to meet lots of people. Obviously, we're a smaller community where you get to know people from school and kids' friends and sleepovers. So I know a lot of your neighbors, like personal, close friends and understand the frustration. Um, every complaint that we've received over the years, I have turned over to ordinance enforcement. That's their job. They, they enforce our ordinances, and they've been out. We also turn things over to the sheriff's office as well. Um, you know, I read some of the emails. It sounds like we haven't done enough because of some relationships. What I said at the beginning was, I know, the, I know some of the people in this foundation, but I also know a lot of your neighbors. There's not been preferential treatment. We have tried to figure out ways to enforce our ordinances. It's extremely hard to enforce the noise ordinance. We do have the noise noise meters. They have to be tuned and tweaked all the time. And the, you have to measure the noise from the property line. Um, and it's been hard to, to frankly, um, show that they have violated the noise ordinance. In spite of every time you guys have called or complained or emailed, we've gone out there. Um, you know, that said, there is some agreement that they didn't have to do, but a year or so ago, um, when we were getting lots of complaints, we called the property or the, the person that has this, this LLs or I, this Dragon Foundation and said, you know, you're frankly annoying all your neighbors. <laughs> I, I can't imagine how that would be a good scenario. There's got to be something you can do. Um, they admitted they had this one giant party if it was for somebody that died and they'll never do it again. And we had this sort of written agreement that wasn't really enforceable, it was just sort of something they were agreeing to do. Um, I've met with lots of, I have some of you that are in this room in my office over the years on this. And we are, we are it's, it's, it's one of these really tough issues. We, we're, we under, I see both sides of it. Um, frankly, after, after the last um, go around of this, I've been working really hard with our economic development team to try to find someone to purchase a property that would um, develop it into a neighborhood. At some point, you guys are gonna have a neighbor, <laughs> there'll be another neighborhood there, and hopefully you'll come to that meeting and not yell at us and say, we don't want houses here, um, but the property is zoned residential. We've had a few developments get really close um, to going there. Um, the last one's called, gonna be called the Preserve. I remember it because we already had a Preserve and we were trying to get them to change the name when they submitted. Um, and that's probably the best way that this gets solved. Um, but I, I do think that it's time for us to do something. We do have this tool, um, agreed that it's old, <laughs> but it's a tool, um, and it gives us, this board, the right to approve or deny. Um, and I just, I think, unfortunately, it hasn't worked, and we've heard from more and more and more people um, that can't enjoy their property. And while I do really agree with what Brian said, um, I just don't see how we can... Um, approve this permit tonight based on the number of complaints and the number of people that aren't able to freely enjoy their property because of this nuisance that's happening next door. So um, with that, I will ask, yes, Penny? So I would like to have that basis for denial included with this motion. The motion is to deny the request, but I think we need to have a basis for denial. Um, and what Chris just said about the number of people that have um, um, the number I've, of I've made a statement on, on my motion already. Okay. I, I, can I think can you I, please restate that then? So I can't I remember all I said, Penny. It's, on, it's recorded. I, I base my denial on this is not the right location in a residential neighborhood. And can we also include in that motion that there have been numerous complaints? I, I think it's important yes. to have that as a basis right. for the denial. Yeah. We'll, Amend my support. Okay. Thank, thanks, Penny. Um, would you, I think that's it. Unless anybody else wanted to say anything up here, um, would you please call the roll? Remember, yes vote is to deny. Um, I'll call the roll and then I have a question afterwards. Mm -hmm. Dalrymple? Yes. Flood? Yes. Urbanowski? Yes. Barnett? Yes. Schultz? Yes. Steele? No. Bernie? No. 
Okay, that motion passes 5-2. We'll go over your question. Um, my question is um, for the attorney and I guess in general, can we repeal, start the process to repeal Ordinance 62, Section 11 and Section 12? How do we do that? And if we could, can I make a motion to that effect? Our Little button at the bottom. Our office can absolutely review that and um, outline that process. Pursuant to the current ordinance, there is no, um, it, I apologize. It is silent on the use of recreational um, vehicles in a residential zoning district and pretty much provides that um, if the applicant has permission from the property owner that we would approve that permit and then use a revocation process should there be violations. So a review of the ordinance and looking at opportunities to revamp that to meet the needs here is something our office can do and provide you with a response at a later meeting. Is a board motion necessary to do this? If it is, I make that motion to... Um, I don't think it's necessary. I think, I think I'd like gonna... to look at this while it's yeah. fresh in all of our minds. Because I know the discussion that I've heard from Dan in the past is that there are some areas of this that need to be revamped, looked at. I believe we have provided a prior written opinions that are, state something similar, and we can certainly revisit those for the board. Thank you, Nancy. Thank you. Okay. Um, we have uh, two more items on pending business. Uh, request to close a road. Uh, Dirk Schultz. So um, we did receive a re revised request. Um, originally, they were asking to close a portion of Franklin Wright each Friday night beginning at 5.30 until 9 for pickleball, potluck, and community fun. And the applicant had talked to me um, and asked if there were other areas where it was possible for them to do something like this. And I suggested that they look at an area that wouldn't cause such a hindrance for so many people in their neighborhood. The applicant has provided all the information that we need to know that people are in support of this on the Beachwood Way. I did reach out to the attorney as well because this is a public road. The township doesn't have jurisdiction over public or private roads. And then also it's the Oakland County Road Commission that would actually give the okay for them to close it with the board recommendation. So the request that you have before you tonight, and I can see the applicant is here as well, um, you're gonna find a request for board approval to temporarily close a portion of Beach Wood Way every Friday starting May 27th until September 9th, 5.30 to 9.30 for subdivision pickleball potluck and get to know your neighbors. It, um, this request has also been reviewed by the fire chief, the DPW, and the Oakland County Sheriff's Office. Numerous complaints were made last year for the subdivision on Flag Franklin Wright, excuse me. Due to the complaints, the applicant has moved the location per the map. It is within the board's sole discretion to determine whether it will grant local approval for a road closer. closure. So, um, Sam, I don't know how you got this looking so good for the board packet. It was pretty crinkly when we received it. I know you were diligent in getting all the names out there. Um, thank you, Ms. Walker. So just to review, Darren, um, Lieutenant Darren Ophira, um, he said, looking at the pictures below, they're only looking to close um, between two parcels on Beach Way. Beachwood Way, um, hard to tell, but he think that's what's requested. It looks like they will be blocking the access to 563 Beachwood Way, and there was no signed approval. The applicant did remedy that and did get the approval and signature for 563. Um, as he said before, he we don't have the authority to close the street, but as long as the whole street approves, including 563, 517, and 518, we can look the other way as long as there are no complaints. That's the big thing. If we do receive complaints like they did last year when that portion of Franklin Wright was closed, we will have to shut it down. He also agrees that any barricade um, would have to be quickly removable should an emergency occur. And he does have a concern that it will be all summer long, but he's confident someone will complain. Um, he doesn't want to turn it into a neighborhood trouble. I also received comments back from our fire um, 
Assistant Fire Chief John Pender, he said street closure obstructions shall be easily removable to allow emergency vehicle access in case of an emergency. The fire department has no objection to the temporary street closure. And then you have something from our um, Department of Public Works, Jeff Stout, Director. DPS has no issues with the proposed temporary closures, as well as comments from David Goodwill. David Goodlow, pardon me, he is our building official. He said the building department has no issue with the proposed road closure. Therefore, I move um, to approve the request as presented on a temporary basis, and if we do get multiple complaints, we'll bring it back to the board for discussion. Okay, moved and supported. Any comments or questions from um, board members? Any public comment? Um, okay. That submitted it. All we're trying to do on Friday nights is just basically, as um, Penny said, play pickleball, cornhole, just kind of have a potluck, a get together. We will be closing, if approved, Beachwood Way by using nets where we play pickleball. The nets are very easily removed. I can pick them up and remove them. We received overwhelming support from our homeowners association and all 10 residents that live on Beachwood Way. The street that is past Beachwood Way is two houses west. The street prior is four houses east. So it's very easy to go around that area if there was any concern whatsoever. Thank you. Any other comments or questions? Sounds like a fun. And what I'll need to do is just reach out to the Oakland County Road Commission on your behalf just to make sure that they approve it as well. And then we'll correspond by email. Okay, thank you very much. Sounds like a fun place to hang out. Uh, all in favor? We also have cocktails afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> All <laughs> That's the most important one. All in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Okay. One last item on tonight's pending was brought down. This is the um, resolution for trustee election support. Yeah, and I want to start this one, Chris, <laughs> if I may. Um, so thank you, Nancy. We've had some conversations regarding this. And most of all, thank you, Julia Dorempel. Um, your service to the clerk's office staff um, in their entirety has been very much appreciated this past month. So I originally had reached out to um, Sam, and I think HR was on the text, is there a way we can pay Julia? Because she comes in and she helps, and she can tell you a little more some of the things that she's been doing, but it's just been nice to have that support. Um, our department feels that support, and we appreciate it. So it got a little more involved than what I thought it would, but after talking um, to Nancy about this, I think that it's gonna be beneficial to the department as a whole, and also moving forward possibly for the November election. So I support it. Um, I move to approve clerk temporarily at will appointment of trustee Dalrymple to assist with elections activities at a rate of $22 per hour retroactive to the week of June 9th, 2022 and authorize a supervisor to notify the union with a um, LOU, which means letter of understanding. Support. Okay. Any discussion on this one? Mike? Uh, the reason I brought it down, I want to make sure we dot our I's and cross our T's. I have a lot of questions. I'm glad to see Nancy's here tonight because you wrote this up. I appreciate that. Absolutely. Uh, I informed Trustee Dow Ruffle when before the meeting started, I fully support her doing this. Being on the election commission, I went now over 10 years, Penny, yeah, replaced Mark Crane back in 2012 when Mark uh, resigned. Uh, we just want to make sure we do everything right. We hold good elections here. We've never had any problem, and we still don't want them. What's happened is we've had numerous employees who have uh, retired or uh, gone to other uh, jobs. And our top person uh, took another job in April, which left us hanging, and we got a primary and general coming up. And this, these uh, election uh, officials, uh, which work for the township, township employees, a lot of education, a lot of training, and you know through the news, through the past years, how much election laws have changed, and they have to stay on top of that whatsoever. Well, we're, in a, we're having to train new people now, so we need help getting ahead of the game here. So one of my questions, I, I got a list here for you. Uh, you base this on our population of the census, that we could do this if we have under 
40,000 residents. I tried to find out, does that 38,304, does that include the residents of the village or is that without the residents of the village included? It's not the, it's just the township, not the village. Town, village residents are township residents and they vote on everything in the township. And that's 3,000, I got the numbers here. That's three, over 3,000 residents, which puts us over the 40,000 limit. I mean, just technicality. I tried to find it on the, on the internet and I couldn't, all they had was a 2010, they hadn't updated the 21 yet. Get that written down. Here it is. Uh, it would be 41589 if you include the uh, village, because they have 30, 3285 Set that aside. That's the legal stuff you have to... We, we pay you the big bucks for, right? <laughs> All right, I like that laugh. All right. Uh, number two, uh, this being a temporary, is that considered the same as a part-time that can't work more than 29 hours? because of the uh, Affordable Care Act, or does that have no, nothing to do with this? That would not apply to this. These are temporary seasonal type works, workers. So that the, the ACA could potentially apply if they were to work more than 1050 hours, but that would likely not be the case, and that would be monitored, but that would not be combined with the role of um, officer. Because a lot of times in our, when we do these type of uh, motions, we'll say no benefits. Yep. Yes. As part of the motion, I didn't hear that in the motion, but we can take care of that. Uh, and I'm questioning the, uh, the pay. I'm going to squabble over 79 cents per hour. Now, it might sound trivial. It might sound trivial. But being a former uh, labor rep myself when I used to, was employed at General Motors, uh, we're, we're trying to help the election coordinator, administrative assistant to the clerk. That's the position that has been left vacant. We just got, uh, Melissa just took care of that. And she started on May 20, she started on May 23rd. So she got a lot of catching up to do by August 2nd. <laughs> her start pay is $21.21. .21. That's, that's her start pay. Why would we want to pay more than $21.21? .21? We're doing the same job. Just the question of the board members. I would like to inject, if I may. Um, so I asked that question too, just not to anybody, but just to myself, yeah. just kind of going through the I know process. It's equivalent of it. over 79 but cents. It, but, but I think mm -hmm. what it is that makes this unique is that um, Julia comes with the experience of the township already behind her. So when someone's starting in a position in May, they don't have the background of the township, but the clerk's office is often um, like a receptionist because it's the first place people come to. And Julia has all that background of how many years? Like six now? Yes. So six years experience, um, and it's not just election stuff. You know, it's stuff, she's, she jumped right in and she's oh, at I the counter and really been um, great for us. And then she, I also see her where she's able to help train people in the department with, oh, that department does this, and this department does that. So it's a little different. No, I, I fully support yeah. uh, trustees, Dara Ruppel. She's excellent. Yeah. She's proven to be excellent. She, her, her credentials are impeccable. She would be great at any clerk, supervisor, or treasurer. She does a great job as a trustee. <laughs> but I just want to bring it to the attention that you know, we represent all the residents. We represent all the township employees, too, you know, as the board. And I just want to make sure fair is fair. Sure. But we're just quibbling over 79 cents. So it's, it's not a make or break. You have my full support. I just want to bring those questions up and, and be transparent. That's yeah. all. Would you like me to respond to each of those questions? Please. Okay. So with regards to the village being part of the census population, the data that we pulled from appears to have included the village as well. I can verify that for you and make sure that you're comfortable with it. That being stated, that is a backup provision. We believe that the clerk does have the authority to make the appointment. However, we did not want to have any, um, any veil of impropriety related to the fact that um, Ms. Dalrymple was also a trustee, or Trustee Dalrymple was also a trustee. So we wanted to negate any 
thing by providing a second layer of authority there. So we do believe that the authority is well vested within the clerk. However, that was a secondary, and I still believe that that, that number would apply using the data that we've provided. Um, looking at the temporary, if you, um, the actual agreement that stipulates the terms of the appointment does explicitly talk that it's an at-will appointment, that there are no additional benefits associated with that, that it can be terminated at any time, and that it only lasts through the August primary, which is the way the statute provides it, except for successful completion, and then you would be able to do a reappointment for the November. So that was included in that agreement, so we wouldn't have to go through the process multiple times. Um, with regard to the hourly rate, we pulled um, information based on market analysis, which provided a range. The maximum of that range, I think, I believe it was uh, anywhere from $12 to $24. And the agreement that's presented for the board allows you to approve up to that $22 mark. So the board does have full discretion under the statute and then within the guidelines of the opinion to determine what the final um, compensation would be for that. Have we got, uh, would the union in on this? We've been this working on getting the clerk's office assistance to complete the election for a month or two okay. now. If, if you've done that IOU? Or We're in that process. Okay, because I was thinking if we did a 21-21, that kind of helps you towards the collective bargaining because, oh, we're not paying you any more than what your current person is at their starting rate. It kind of helps towards the bargaining too. Now, they're probably watching this right now saying, hey, that's a good point. We're going to hammer them on that <laughs> at 79 cents. But it's a fact of life. Well, to the trustee through the chair, the, the idea behind that would be that this is temporary based on emergent need, and that would justify the enhanced compensation rate, whereas the other position does come equipped with full benefits, um, privileges, fringes, and then longevity, and then obviously as a township employee, an actual property interest in the employment. So there is significant value to being a full-time There's employee. no longevity. We don't have that in our country. There's no longevity, but there there are you know definite obligations within um, the hiring and termination of a of a of a township employee. That's a that's a touchy yes. subject. We we we, we only got. A and couple we will untouch. We will untouch. Okay, Mike. That's it. Can we hear from Julia? We're doing contract well, talk now. Sam, did you want to add anything? Yeah, just really quickly with the twenty-two dollar rate. Um, the other temporary staff in the clerk's office is at the clerk three voter registration level and their range is from about $18 to $22.97 and so to put Julia in the equivalent of that we just kept it at the max of the 22 that was in that agreement that Nancy had drafted based on the comps so we're it was more in line with that voter registration clerk than with the elections coordinator position. So she started next Monday at 17 something an hour yeah gotcha yeah I did my homework <laughs> that's, that's all I got Chris Okay, thank you. I can beat that to death, I know. <laughs> Anything else? I would really like to hear from Julia. I, you know, just to, what your thoughts are on this, Julia, and how much I appreciate you. Yeah, I am so happy to be able to help the clerk's office between all the AV ballots that have come in, the stickering, the getting them out, the putting them in the mail, the sorting them, the stacking them, all the things that I had no idea that happened uh, to get ballots to people them being returned and Penny's right. I mean, standing at the at the desk, I mean, I answered questions about waste or about garbage. I got people, somebody had a permit that needed to be filed. Somebody needed a, something with a backflow system. So I got them to where they needed to go. So she's right, coming around that corner, people stopped there or I would just engage them. People asked about the art wall. I could tell them about, you know, that every month that a new, um, one of our elementary schools, middle schools or high school, like the art changes right there in the hallway when you walk in. So just being able to greet people coming in, it's been really nice. Uh, to be able to do that, answer all the questions, do the filing, like just help out her department in any way that I can. And so as simple as some of it is, it's uh, if it's helpful, then I'm happy to be able to do it and get to a successful election and uh, be part of the team. All right, it was moved and supported and talked about. Any other discussion? Seeing no one come running forward. Um, yeah, it's a resolution, let's do a roll call, please. Um, Schultz, yes, Steele. Yes. Bernie. Yes. Darimpo. Yes. Flood? Absolutely, yes. Oh, can, can the Ripple vote? <laughs> She's going to say that. Yeah, that's fine. Attorney? Just there. say abstain. Abstain. <laughs> um, that would be fine. Um, Conflict of interest. So abstain, the Ripple, Flood? He said, he already said yes. Urbanowski? Yes. Barnett? Yes. Thank okay, you. that passes 6 0 1. All right, now we have a few reports tonight, several. 
First tonight is our police and fire report. Not gonna go through all these, but you can pull them all up on your computers at home if you're interested in seeing what's, what they're up to, but they're busy. Um, is there a motion to receive and file the police and fire report? So moved. Support. All in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? And, and engine three is in service now, our new fire engine. Um, we have a Pollyann Trail birthday walk. Donnie, you probably want to mention something about this as our trail that, representative. Oh, thanks, Chris. I um, just hope that everybody can come out and walk from um, Oxford to Orion and back and then share birthday cake. So August 27th, 9 till noon, and just uh, show the support of the trail and our two towns and the trail which converges between the two. Move to receive and file as presented. All in favor say aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Free disposal day results. It was a huge success. Um, do you want to share this, Mike? Yes. This is the first one this year, and there was 178 vehicles disposed almost 30 tons of waste, which equates to about 23 20-yard 20 uh, uh, roll-off dumpsters. And that's... Uh, Stuff that was taken out of people's yards and their homes and whatever. It was free, most of the village and the residents. And the second uh, collection will be on Saturday, September 17th. And we'll keep them abreast of that. And we want to thank Waste Management for being good neighbors and taking care of that. And did you move receiving and filing? I sure did. It's part. <laughs> thank you for the report. All in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? We have the library audit they gave us a copy of. It's in your file, it's in your packet. Very interesting. Is there a motion to receive and file? I'd like to make a motion to receive and file the library audit, and I do have a comment, because I do find it very interesting. Supported by flood, go ahead well, with your comment. I just wanted to mention that the library brought in more revenues and spent less money, and they have um, a good fund balance, and I was happy to see that. We restarted our Lake Orion community Hello, Lake Orion area community oh. collaboration, collaboration something, low act. <laughs> and with a new director, Chase McMunn, and uh, we're working with the schools and the library and um, the village and the township to collaborate on purchases and things like that. So we met last week, and one of the topics we, they want to maybe collaborate on is going out for RFPN audit services. All right, moved and supported. All in favor, say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Okay, the annual F65 report, which is on page 244. Okay, so the F65 annual local unit fiscal report filing with the state of Michigan. This comes out of my department. Tandem Graves has filed this with the state of Michigan. And each year the township is required to file an annual local unit fiscal report. This provides the state of Michigan with the township's audited financial statements in the format required by the state. The attached report was submitted to the state prior to the deadline, which means that we will not have any penalties and we will be able to um, get full revenue sharing, which is always a good thing. And I want to give a shout out to Tandem Graves, our accounting controller, who is doing a phenomenal job in her role. She's new to that position. She was hired as the coordinator for Orion Township back, I believe it was July of um, 2021. So um, I move that we receive and file the F65 annual local unit fiscal report as presented. Support. Okay, it's been moved and supported. All in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? And we have financial statements. Okay, so the following, you're gonna find the attached balance sheets, the income sheets, the manual journal entry reports through June 28th of 2022. The board action would be to receive and file the balance sheets, income and statements, and manual journal entry reports. So I need a motion. So moved. And I'll support it. And then just um, if for the public, if you have any questions, if you want to take a look online, if you've got any questions about these reportings, it shows each of the funds, the investments that the township is making, the expenditures that are going out. It also shows some of those special assessment districts that we talked about tonight. And all of the dollars that the township has moving throughout the books and taking into the cash receipting in our treasurer's office is all accounted for here on those statements. Okay. Moved and supported. All in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? 
All right, and last report tonight are the qualifying statement. Yeah, so this is always good. Um, Tandem Graves, our county controller, has provided this information to the board. The qualifying statement approval letter each year, the township is required to submit a qualifying statement to the state of Michigan Department of Treasury. The attached approval letter shows us to issue debt without further approval from the department. And you have a letter that was submitted to the municipality, Orion Township, by Rod Taylor, Administrator, Community Engagement and Finance Division. And he just basically states, thanks for submitting your qualifying statement for Orion Charter Township to the Michigan Department of Treasury. Based upon the information provided in the qualifying statement, we have determined that the municipality is in material compliance with the criteria identified. And I move that we receive and file the report as presented. Support. <laughs> Who's that one? Paul Rimple. I'm sorry, Urbanowski. Okay. okay. Sorry, I just goes uh, from that side. Urbanowski, just... thank you. All in favor, say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Okay, that completes our business. Public comment part, whatever number we're on. Anybody want to get public comment on anything tonight before we bring it up here to the board? Seeing no one run forward, thank you all for being here uh, and for your comments earlier in the meeting. We'll go to on board comment. We'll start on the other on this today with Brian. Um, just real quick, want to thank everyone that participated in Lake Orion's American Summer this year. Um, I know from uh, some feedback from the bars and restaurants that this was a great year for them. Um, the pub crawl, if anyone was, I know some of us were, uh, it, was, it was a busy night for lots of the bars and restaurants, and that's what it's all about. So um, thank you for participating. Thanks to all the sponsors um, and everyone that participated. See you next year. All right. Mr. Flood. Glad to see the residents show up tonight. I wish we could fill every one of these seats every board meeting. Because if you know what some of the stuff we do is kind of mundane, it's government stuff you have to do. But the residents stay informed. I like transparency, and I like being held accountable. I have no problem with that. That's my comment, Mr. Supervisor. Thank you, Ms. Steele. Thank you, Mr. Barnett. Um, today um, was busy in the treasurer's office. The tax bills are out and people are coming in to pay. And they are payable from July 1st through September 14th. You can pay them in the office. Um, happy belated 4th, everyone. And what a great place to be, uh, Orion Township, with double fireworks, pub crawl, and American summer. So good job, Brian. Thank you. Um, happy to see you, Julia and Penny uh, Green, to have you work there. I think it's important to share that knowledge, and being that our election cycle is only um, every other year, um, to have somebody else in that uh, office, just to be able to um, get that information um, dumped is very important, being that the elections are only over two years. And with the elections, I just did want to make a mention that um, this is not a public announcement for myself, but I just wanted to let everybody know that I am running for state rep. Everybody knows it up here. Most of the public knows it. And I just want to uh, maybe say sorry in advance because I think sometimes between the chat room and the phone calls and the front desk and the mailers that are not always coming from me and sometimes they're coming from PACs that I apologize in advance if it makes anybody here uncomfortable, including the residents, because that is not my intent. My intent is to do a good job for everybody here um, and in this district and in Orion at the state level and not to make anybody here uncomfortable in the process. So thank you. Thank you. Ms. Schultz. I just want to give a shout out to my husband, Al. Um, he's been pretty amazing. I've been putting in a lot of hours, including working at our kitchen table and working this past weekend here in the office. We have an amazing staff at Orion Township, and everybody is engaged in this process. Sam Timko was sitting with me, and the former accounting, um, uh, the former um, election coordinator this weekend as well when she could have been out playing with the kids. So I just am thankful. I'm really, really thankful for the support of the staff. It, it takes everybody. Our community comes together, rallies together to be able to hold an election. We have 15 precincts and they're in our churches, our municipal buildings. Um, our businesses are engaged. Everybody's helpful. Our first responders, our DPW department, our Parks and Recreation department, our police officers, it takes everybody to run a successful election. You can't do it on your own. So it's good to see everybody rallying. And we have Noah 
in the audience also. He's one of our election inspectors too. So if you know anybody that wants to be a part of it, have them give me a call. Um, it might take me a little bit to get back with you, but I promise by the evening, right around 8 o'clock, when I start returning calls, I'll be calling you and get you squared away. You can get an application in the clerk's office. Come in anytime, 8.30 to 4.30. Just come. You don't even have to talk to me first. Um, but we would really like to get your help. Go on our website. You can track your ballots. You can track your applications to request an absent voter ballot. We're up to date on all of those. We get them in the system as soon as they're received. I know Julie was talking about helping get all of that um, you know, organized so that we can get everything together. But it really is a process. And we want the voters to be engaged. Just vote. We don't care if you come in person and get your ballot early. We'd love to have you go to the precinct too, whatever suits your lifestyle, but vote. There's a lot on this ballot, and it's really important that we engage 100% of our voters. That's a wrap. Kim. I do want to congratulate Noah. I've known him for a little bit as well. Um, my stepson, Gordon, is also in the same troop, and I just want to let you know that we appreciate the, the leadership that you show to him because he's very excited about what he's doing since he moved here a year ago and joined the troop. So you're, you're doing good things for the people that are coming behind you. So congratulations from this McCombsky family. Um, and then just one other thing, um, <clears throat> of course, the Orient Area Chamber of Commerce is having a ribbon cutting this week, uh, Thursday, between, or it starts at 4.30 for Your Food Dude, also known as Garrett. Um, it's a food truck, but he uh, is making us go to North Orion into Oxford at harvest time. So um, anyone's welcome to come in and take part in that. Tacos? Probably. Yes. <laughs> All right, Julia. Uh, I just wanted to say congratulations to Avery Case, who is the student joining our Environmental Resource Committee um, with our fabulous uh, educators with Steve Ty and Tim Polanke. We really encouraged them to help us find a student that would um, want to get more involved, and we found the one. Also, thank you again to the Lions Club for an amazing jubilee uh, while we had that as well. Uh, my kids enjoyed the rides. I mean, the elephant ears, everything uh, was amazing downtown to be able to do that for our community, and it makes me so grateful to be here. And then once again, um, every Monday, except for this week, Monday with the holiday, but we are still feeding people. If you know anyone who is in need of groceries, uh, we can take care of you on Mondays with Forgotten Harvest across the street at Woodside Bible Church. So we are more than two years and counting, and the project has no signs of slowing. Um, we're actually going to organize the pantry again tomorrow, so we're going to do a lot of stuff over there. So if you, know, and if you know anybody, please reach out and let me know, and we will get them fed. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for coming out. It's great to see, um, see you here on a beautiful night when I know you could all be doing other things. Um, just a couple quick ones from me, and we'll get out of here. I um, just want to give a congratulations to our budget and procurement director for completing the Michigan Infrastructure Council's asset management course, which is a nice thing for her to have in representing the township. So congrats Yay, to Ashley. Ashley. And um, agreed with kind of what all you said. There's a lot of great things happening in our community. <laughs> Um, and we're, we're on a roll. So uh, the fireworks were amazing this weekend. Brian's um, event, it's really a community event, but led by Brian was, was awesome. I know the local businesses um, all speak really highly of that event. But this is happening. You missed a great concert tonight. I'm seeing pictures. Um, but uh, just to rewind, I keep reminding people that we have all kinds of events happening on our amphitheater hill all summer. Tonight was the Air National Guard Band of the Midwest, and they were going to do their um, encore at 8:20. So we all missed it. Sorry, guys. We, if we we wouldn't have talked so long, we might have been able to catch a song or two. But every Tuesday is a free concert, and then the other concerts are are really cost. Um, they're affordable, and it's good family fun. So if you haven't been out to the hill, check it out. And with that, we do have a little bit of business to take care of with our attorney. Um, in a closed executive session, so I would ask for a motion to adjourn to closed session to discuss an attorney opinion. I move that we go to closed executive session to discuss attorney opinions regarding pending tribunal appeals. Support. Okay, moved and supported. Uh, roll call, please, because I think we need one for that. That was Steele support? Yeah. Um, Steele? Yes. Bernie? Yes. Dorimpo? Yes. Flood? Yes. Urbanowski? Yes. Barnett? Yes. Schultz? Yes. Time? 8.34, and we will 
um, come back to close the meeting, but we will do not plan on taking any action. So that's a cue for you guys to be able to enjoy <laughs> your, the last hour of sun. Congratulations, Noah. Yeah, congrats, Noah.